game development has gotten a lot more accessible over the past decade or so. Nowadays, you can just download an engine like Unreal or Unity or Godot, and you can just start making things with state-of-the-art, professional-grade tools. If you were trying to get into making games back in the mid-2000s, though, the options looked a little different. If you bought a game that included mod support and had an active community, then you could make new assets, maps, and scripts for an existing AAA game, and you'd get to learn to use some of the same tools and engines as the professionals. But you couldn't build your own game from scratch. These engines represented millions of dollars in R&D investment, and the idea of publicly releasing their source code was unthinkable. So if you wanted to make games from scratch, you could get into C++ and maybe learn a framework like SDL or SFML, and that'll let you learn the fundamentals and start building bits and pieces of your own quote-unquote real game engine. But as a hobbyist, getting from that point to a finished playable game was a monumental undertaking. And your player base was extremely limited, since distributing your game meant uploading a shady-looking executable to your FTP server and posting on forums trying to convince people to download and run it. Coming at it from another angle, you could learn Flash, and then you'd have an easier time building a complete playable game. And people could actually play it in their browsers. But it wasn't a real game. You were limited to fairly simple interactions on a 2D canvas. And then there were products like Game Maker, which tended to be even more limited, but they were purpose-built to make it easy for beginners to make a game. You could use these tools as a complete beginner without getting overwhelmed by too much complexity, and they'd ease you into the harder parts. So that's the story around 2005 or so. AAA game engines were the state of the art, but they were up on Mount Olympus, outside the reach of mere mortals. If you wanted to use state-of-the-art tools, you could hang around the temples of the modding scene and get some limited exposure. But to get full, unfettered access to a modern AAA game engine, you needed to find a job and ascend to Olympus. And quite often that meant supplicating yourself before the publisher gods and participating in the slow ritual sacrifice of your free time and your family relationships. If you were a hobbyist, and especially if you wanted to sell what you made, state-of-the-art game engines were just out of your reach. To start making your own games, you had two options. You could use beginner-friendly tools that made it easy to create games but were very limited, or you could treat game development as a subset of software engineering, learn to be a competent C++ programmer first, and start writing your own game systems with either a very limited technical scope for your project, or else a scant hope of ever creating a finished game. Then, around the middle of the decade, some exciting things started happening. Microsoft released its XNA framework, which made the programmer-first approach far more accessible and productive. Games made with XNA could be self-published on Xbox Live Indie Games and reach a wide audience of Xbox 360 and Zune owners. Unity was released and started catching on as a platform for making 3D games. It was a brilliant middle ground between something like XNA and something like Game Maker. It offered a full suite of tools that were approachable and user-friendly, with relatively few technical limitations, all for the low, low price of free. Meanwhile, Game Maker got progressively better, and other beginner-friendly tools started springing up. Digital distribution became the norm. It got more and more feasible to release indie games on consoles, as platforms like Steam slowly opened up to smaller and smaller publishing outfits, and as mobile app stores caught on, people got used to the idea of downloading full PC games from trusted, curated storefronts. Then in 2009, Epic released UDK, a free version of Unreal Engine 3. Over the decade prior, Unreal Engine had become extremely popular as a licensed engine for big-budget AAA games. Epic had made a successful business model out of licensing Unreal to other studios, and they'd invested heavily in improving the architecture and the toolset to create a powerful, user-friendly, and genre-agnostic engine. The release of UDK marked a turning point. It was becoming advantageous for Epic to compete with free tools like Unity and to open their engine up to smaller and smaller developers. UDK was an incremental step from the UT3 mod tools, but the next several years saw an increased focus on capturing a wider market share, with Epic catering to indie game developers, educational institutions, architecture firms, film studios, and more. In 2015, Unreal Engine 4 was released publicly with full source code access at no upfront cost. In the years since, the barrier to entry has gotten lower and licensing terms have become more permissive. Nowadays, Unreal is uniquely positioned as the dominant AAA caliber game engine, since most other AAA engines are either proprietary to the publisher who owns them, or their cry engine. But Unity has continued to improve, slowly closing the gap with Unreal as the AAA distinction has started to lose meaning and competing with Unreal for market share. 
Godot has started to emerge as a refreshing alternative to Unity for indies and beginners. It's sort of a middle ground between Game Maker and Unity while also having the distinction of being truly free and open source. And for those who are interested in programming first and foremost, Monogame is the successor to XNA for accessible C-sharp development, and it's still hugely valuable to get your hands dirty with C++ using a library like SDL or Raylib. So if you want to get into making games now, you've got some good options. There's really no single best choice out of these three engines that I've chosen to highlight. It really all depends on who you are and what you want to do. For someone who ultimately wants to work on AAA games, Unreal is a no-brainer. For an absolute beginner, I'd recommend picking up Godot and focusing on making small, complete games. And for somebody who can't make up their mind and wants a broad range of applicable experience, Unity is a good place to start. That's kind of a hand-wavy summary, though, and there's really no definitive one-size-fits-all answer. So to try and put it another way, if you're a beginner, use whatever speaks to you. The most important thing is that you're making stuff and you're learning. If you have an experienced team, sticking with what your team already knows is usually the smartest choice. And if you're trying to make a specific game and you're torn between two engines, then you'll have to compare them critically and try and figure out which one will let you make the best version of that game with the least painful development cycle. I tend to use Unreal because it's what I have the most professional experience with, it gives me a lot of low-level control via C++, and its first-class networking support makes it a natural choice for multiplayer games. Now, one thing I've heard people say about Unreal over the years goes something like this. Unreal is designed for multiplayer first-person shooters, so if you want to make a multiplayer first-person shooter, Unreal's great. But if you want to make a different kind of game, it's going to be awkward and hard to figure out. There's a little bit of truth to that, but I think it's sort of a 2007 observation. Unreal definitely has multiplayer FPS roots, and it led pretty strongly with them a decade ago. But it has a long history as a genre-agnostic engine. You can make any kind of video game with Unreal, and in recent years that's been borne out by improvements to the tools, the documentation and example projects, and the underlying architecture. But a broader criticism of Unreal is that it has a steeper learning curve compared to something like Unity. I think there is some truth to that observation, although it mostly relates to the underlying software architecture. When it comes to most user-facing tools and workflows, materials, animations, cinematics, level editing, scripting, I would argue that Unreal is just as approachable and user-friendly as anything else, if not more so. But programming in Unreal, whether you're comfortable with C++ or you're mostly sticking to blueprints, can be difficult to master. Unreal 4 has made it easy for anyone to start programming, but learning to write effective, idiomatic game code in Unreal can feel pretty daunting to newcomers particularly people who are coming from an engine like Unity or Godot. Part of that learning curve has to do with the history that we've just looked at. Unreal has been around for over 20 years, and since the very beginning, its goal has been to support a huge range of features and platforms while maximizing developer productivity and runtime performance. In a nutshell, Unity started out with the aim of being accessible, and it's gotten more powerful and full-featured over time. Unreal started out with the aim of being powerful and full-featured, and it's gotten more accessible over time. And accessibility is great, but lowering the barrier to entry doesn't really flatten the learning curve. It just gets more people on the curve. So my goal with these videos is to try and make the Unreal programming learning curve a little easier to climb. I've been working with Unreal pretty consistently over the past 10 years or so, and I hope I can offer some insights that might be useful to junior developers who are looking to improve their technical skills, or just for people who are new to Unreal but don't necessarily want to have their hand held through every little step. In the next video, I'd like to offer you some insights about the basic design patterns that you use to create game objects in Unreal. We'll look at some common concepts and see how Unity, Godot, and Unreal implement them differently, and then we'll take a look at some of Unreal's core classes and how to use them. That video is coming soon, but if you'd like to get early access to it right now, or if you just want to support the work that goes into making these videos, feel free to take a look at my Patreon page. I'm just one person, and it takes solid weeks of effort to produce one of these things, so I can't promise that much in the way of kickbacks, but your support is greatly appreciated. In any event, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.